Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Britton Clement. And I'm Emily Stu. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Manila rejects apology over bus hostage crisis despite Hong Kong sanctions. Hong Kong prepares to welcome Year of the Horse with reunion dinners and flower market visits. Hong Kong and global shares take hit as U.S. Federal Reserve trims bond purchases. The Philippines is insisting that it won't make a formal apology for the Manila bus hostage crisis which killed eight Hong Kong residents four years ago. Manila made its position clear after expressing regret and disappointment over Hong Kong's decision to deny visa-free access to Philippine diplomats and officials. Manila today hit back after Chief Executive Leung Chunying announced what he called his first round of sanctions against the Philippines. He scrapped visa-free access for diplomats and officials in a bid to force the Philippine government to apologize for the Manila bus hostage tragedy, which left eight Hong Kong residents dead. But Manila refused to budge. A total renegotiation has been opened by the Hong Kong SAR government to seek a demand for an apology which the Philippines, as a sovereign nation, is not prepared to consider. Manila expressed dismay over Leung's move, describing it as unfortunate. The Philippine government regrets the Hong Kong SAR government's implementation of sanctions against the Philippines, particularly the requirement for, of visas for Philippine official and diplomatic passport holders which is usually given to government officials on official travel to Hong Kong. From Wednesday, up to 800 holders of official or diplomatic Philippine passports will not be able to enjoy the 14-day visa-free arrangement. Ordinary Filipino tourists and travelers will not be affected. It's the first time that Hong Kong issued sanctions against a foreign state, and it came after the government felt that there was no progress in efforts to resolve the simmering row over the hostage tragedy. In August 2010, eight SAR residents were killed when a sacked Filipino policeman who seized a tour bus opened fire as police tried to storm the vehicle which was parked near the Carino Grandstand where Philippine presidents take their oath of office. The sanction is unfortunate because a substantive closure on the Carino Grandstand incident had already been arrived at three years ago with the previous Hong Kong SAR government. But survivors and victims' families disagree and have been demanding a proper apology, compensation, punishment for the responsible officials, and better protection for tourists. Substantial progress was made on all fronts, except for the apology which Manila reiterated today is out of the question. The Philippines remains committed to manifest compassion for the victims and their families and is ready to turn over the additional tokens of solidarity from the Filipino people. While welcoming the continuation of talks to try to resolve the issue, the chief executive has not ruled out more penalties further down the line. In reply to the statement from Manila, the Hong Kong government said this evening that the sanctions unveiled yesterday were meant as a stern warning to the Philippine administration. The strain in ties between Hong Kong and the Philippines comes as relations between Beijing and Manila are at a low because of conflicting territorial claims in the potentially oil and gas rich waters of the South China Sea. Hong Kong is preparing to welcome the Year of the Horse with family reunions and visits to flower fairs. Markets were busy as people stocked up on festive items, but this year there'll be no fresh chicken on the menu. ATV's Bolong reports. Markets were packed early this morning as people shopped for items they need for family reunion dinners. But they had to do without fresh chicken this year. That's because a batch of imported chickens from across the border tested positive for the deadly H7N9 strain of the bird flu virus. More than 20,000 chickens at the Zhengsha Wan wholesale market were slaughtered as a result and a three-week ban was imposed on the sale of imported and locally raised live chickens. Poultry stores were quiet today as vendors could sell only frozen poultry. The government should increase our compensation, said this stall owner who complained that earnings have plunged. If we can't sell chicken, we can't pay our rent. The bird flu scare made people cautious even with frozen poultry. This woman says she bought a chicken for a prayer service and won't be eating it. 
While many people gave chicken stalls a miss, other vendors were raking in the money. Butchers, fishmongers and vegetable sellers all said profits were up from last year. Chief Executive Leung Chung Ying is not spending the Lunar New Year in Hong Kong, but he has recorded a festive message. He said while many families will be enjoying reunion dinners, there are those who need a helping hand. Leung paid tribute to volunteers who prepare food for the needy. In Shamshou Po, some volunteers took Leung's message to heart and organized a festive meal for 200 elderly people, many of whom live on their own. The senior citizens were also given bags filled with rice and dried goods. Crowds flocked to Victoria Park today to make the most of the last day of operations at the city's biggest flower market. Toy horses were the best sellers as revelers hunted for good luck charms. Those buying flowers had to pay 20% more than last year because the harsh winter on the mainland damaged plants. But prices at the fair in Causeway Bay and other venues in Hong Kong were expected to be slashed before midnight. Tens of thousands of people are expected to welcome the horse as it gallops in at the stroke of midnight. There will be special all-night transport services for them. Most MTR routes will remain open while bus companies will run special services. Many Hong Kong people have left the city to spend the holiday weekend elsewhere. The airport was extra busy and trains to the mainland were full. Nearly 8 million people are expected to go through the city's control points during the festive period. Those staying at home have treats in store, including the fireworks display over the harbour on Saturday. There's also the spectacular New Year parade tomorrow night in Jim Sha Joy. More than 30 local and international groups practice today for the event. The performers include a cycling brass band from the Netherlands. It's unique for, how, for us to be, to be in Hong Kong, uh, like we wear typical Dutch costume and we wear wooden shoes. Uh, so to perform in Hong Kong, I think it's a privilege. And there's a carnival group from the Caribbean. The Washington Redskins cheerleaders are also in town for a repeat performance. I'm very excited to be here and I'm honored to be performing for Chinese New Year. More than 100,000 people are expected to watch the parade, which begins at the Cultural Center, then winds its way through the streets of Jim Sha Joy before ending at the Sheraton Hotel. Bo Leung, ATV News. Four activists have been granted bail after they pleaded not guilty to trespassing the PLA barracks in Admiralty last month. And Development Minister Paul Chan has been charged with careless driving in connection with an accident last year. Development Chief Paul Chan has been plagued by controversy since he joined the government. Now he's been charged with a count of careless driving. The 58-year-old minister was driving along the Canal Road flyover near Happy Valley Racecourse in August last year when his car collided with a taxi. Chan and the taxi driver were sent to hospital with neck injuries. Both passed breathalyzer tests. A police spokesman said the decision to charge Chan was made after officers sought legal advice following their investigation. The case has been scheduled for March at Eastern Court. Chan issued a statement this afternoon saying he'll respect the result of the investigation, although he hasn't received the summons yet. Four activists have pleaded not guilty to charges of trespassing at the PLA barracks during a protest last month. The three men and one woman, aged 15 to 40, appeared at Eastern Court this morning on a charge of entering a closed area without a permit. They were arrested on New Year's Day, a week after breaking into the Admiralty barracks waving British colonial flags. It's believed they were protesting against the construction of a PLA dock at the central waterfront. They were granted bail of $500 each and the case was adjourned until the end of next month. Commerce Minister Greg So denied that there were political motives behind the government's decision to shelve a funding request for RTHK's new headquarters. Speaking on radio this morning, he said the government couldn't win over lawmakers despite slashing the budget by 12% to $5.3 billion. The government will now focus on retendering the project, but So warned the modified proposal may be even more expensive because of rising construction costs. 
Members of the Professional Teachers Union protested today to press for the release of mainland activist Xu Zhu Yong. Xu, who has been campaigning for officials to disclose their assets, was jailed for four years on Sunday for disturbing public order. The demonstrators began their march at Victoria Park before heading to seven other locations, including Beijing's liaison office in Weston, in a round of so-called flash protests. Executive Council convener Lam Wen Guang has added his voice to the debate on political reform, saying civil nomination is costly, time-consuming and impractical. Pan-Democrats, meanwhile, continue to attack Justice Chief Rimsky Yun for effectively ruling out civil nomination, despite a government promise to hear all views during an ongoing public consultation on constitutional changes. Even before the government kicked off its consultation on political reform last month, pan-democrats had been pushing for civil nomination. This will allow ordinary voters to nominate candidates for the 2017 chief executive election. But several senior mainland officials have shot down the idea. And in an article published in local newspapers yesterday, Justice Chief Rimsky Yun became the first Hong Kong minister to effectively rule out civil nomination, using legal arguments to back up his stance. Executive Council convener Lam Wun Kwong today came out in support of Yoon. Speaking on government radio, Lam urged people to consider whether civil nomination is practical. He said not many countries have adopted the practice, which he described as time-consuming and expensive. He was also backed by pro-establishment lawmaker Priscilla Leung. Speaking on another radio show, she said the Justice Minister had clearly spelled out the proposals that would not be accepted under the basic law. Leung said by stating his views now, people won't waste time raising unacceptable proposals during the three remaining months of consultation. Opponents claim that civil nomination violates the city's mini-constitution because Article 45 gives the nomination committee the sole authority to name candidates for the city's top job. Pan-Democrats, including Civic Party Chairwoman Audrey Yu, disagree completely. Yu pointed out that the pro-democracy camp's three-track proposal allows voters and political parties, as well as the nomination committee, to choose candidates. She said the committee's authority would not be undermined because it too can select chief executive hopefuls. She said Yun's article and the government's consultation document overlooked other basic law clauses, which give Hong Kong people the right to nominate and stand in the election. Regional markets have suffered a hit after the U.S. central bank took another step to wind down its economic stimulus program. The move came at the last meeting chaired by Federal Reserve Chief Ben Bernanke. A new era begins in the U.S. as Ben Bernanke steps down as chairman of the Federal Reserve tomorrow and hands over the reins of the central bank to Janet Yellen, the first woman to take up the post. But before leaving the high-profile job, Bernanke fired a parting shot at his last Fed meeting. He and fellow board members decided to trim bond purchases by $10 billion U.S. dollars a month to $65 billion. The Fed has been buying bonds to keep U.S. interest rates low in a bid to stimulate the economy. It's now detected a pickup in economic activity growth, enabling it to wind down its stimulus program, which began in 2008 when a recession hit the U.S. and spread around the world. And with unemployment falling in America, the U.S. central bank felt confident to reduce its asset buying scheme. But many analysts had hoped that the jitters caused by the current financial turmoil in Turkey and other emerging markets might persuade the Fed to postpone its action. When that didn't happen, major stock markets headed south. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index closed 0.5% lower, shedding 106 points to finish at 22,035. The benchmark ended the year of the snake and January near a five-month low. The Monetary Authority warned that the Fed's tapering may lead to funds flowing out of the city and urged investors to be cautious. Protesters in Ukraine are refusing to disperse despite a government amnesty for those imprisoned during the recent unrest. Opposition leaders are vowing to fight on until they get what they want. ATV's Banner Work reports. The noisy and sometimes violent protests in Kiev have been going on since November when President Viktor Yanukovych decided against signing a trade deal with Europe. The protesters, who have set cars on fire and smashed up property, appear to have the full support of the US and Europe. 
In his latest move to try to end the protests, the president has promised to free anyone arrested during the unrest, as long as the protesters, who are led by far-right politicians, leave the buildings and squares they've occupied. Boxer-turned-politician Vitaly Klitschko insisted the amnesty could inflame tensions across the divided country, but didn't explain how, since the prisoner release has been one of the key demands he and other opposition leaders have been pushing for. Klitschko told the crowd in Kiev's Independence Square that there will be no victory without a fight, so the protesters decided not to budge. Another government opponent said no conditions should be attached to the amnesty law, which was passed after nearly 12 hours of talks, but opposition parties abstained from the vote. They want the president to resign in early elections and threaten more violence if their demands aren't met. If people get a feeling that we've already restored the constitutional law and order in the country and we decrease the powers of the president and rebalance the power in, in Ukraine, so this could even uh, somehow uh, calm down the situation in, in Ukraine. If no, another surge of violence. The protesters have been given 15 days to vacate government buildings. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News. Anti-government protesters in Thailand say they will not obstruct Sunday's election, but opposition leaders are urging people not to vote. The protest leaders began a three-day push today to oppose the vote and rustle up support for their cause. They want to rid the government of any influence of former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat and his family. His sister, current Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat, is expected to win, but not enough candidates have been able to register to provide a quorum for Parliament to endorse a new government after the election. Teenage, teenage singer Justin Bieber is in hot water again, this time over claims that he hit a limousine driver. But first now, world rap whistleblower Edward Snowden has been branded as a grave threat to the U.S. Ben Arok reports. The heads of five U.S. spy agencies appeared before a congressional panel in Washington to discuss the impact of the revelations by former intelligence contractor Edward Snowden. Documents he took when he fled the U.S. last year exposed a massive electronic snooping program which targeted world leaders and ordinary citizens. The intelligence chiefs accused Snowden of being a grave threat to the U.S., but they had one request. Snowden claims that he's won and that his mission is accomplished. If that is so, I call on him and his accomplices to facilitate the return of the remaining stolen documents that have not yet been exposed to prevent even more damage to U.S. security. Snowden has been granted asylum in Russia and has rejected calls to return home, saying he won't get a fair trial in the U.S. A rare winter storm that hit the southern U.S. has been blamed for at least seven deaths. More than 60 million people endured freezing conditions. Heavy snowfalls were reported in several states, including Virginia, where the coastal areas had up to 25 centimeters. Driving conditions were hazardous, with hundreds of accidents reported, while almost 3,000 flights were affected. Animal control officers in California will not easily forget the year of the snake, which ends at midnight. They were called to a house in Santa Ana, where they found hundreds of snakes, most of them dead. It's, it's definitely a house of horrors in there. Uh, just in one room alone, we had 56 dead snakes and 12 live, and that's only one room. A teacher who lived in the house was arrested for animal cruelty. There was a media scrum in the Canadian city of Toronto as teenage singer Justin Bieber arrived at a police station to surrender himself in connection with an assault last month. The 19-year-old pop star was accused of hitting a limousine driver on the head several times after getting into the vehicle outside a nightclub. Bieber will appear in a Toronto court in March. The teenager has been in trouble several times and just last week he was arrested in the US state of Florida and charged with driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News. Time now for sports with Raymond Young. And it's all changed in the English.